She's everywhere. The TV ads, the big screen, the posters. Now she's made the front cover of a new Rundle Mall trail. Let's join Ginger. She'll take you on a journey around our central shopping precinct with its perennial mix of shoppers and tourists and city workers. But wander around with Rundle Mall manager David West and he'll tell you this modern shopping mall had its beginnings way back in a very different era. OK, David, number one. Let's do it. This is it. John Rundle, a yeah. famous property owner in, uh, in South Australia and, of course, Rundle Street, named after John Rundle. He, w he, was, he goes back to the very beginnings, doesn't he? He does. And this building, of course, 1896, uh, yeah. and now houses the uh, very famous Hague's Chocolates shop. Of course. Well, they say, don't they, that this is one of the most fancy gothic buildings that isn't a church. They certainly do. And I know that uh, the Adelaide City Council put a lot of energy into making sure this building was restored to make it a prime site in the mall. It's a great start. Beautiful start. That's number one on the guide map ticked off, just another 22 fascinating stops to go. Of course, lots of them hark back to before this was a pedestrian mall. In the days of horse and jinker and push bikes, Rundle Street ran from King William all the way to the parklands. Later it saw horse-drawn trams and later still, a slow procession of cars. But come the early 1970s, Premier Don Dunstan put a stop to all that. Rundle Street was closed between King William and Pultley Streets. The road was ripped up, the paving went down and the Rundle Mall was born. At the official opening in 1976, champagne ran through the fountain and 10,000 people came to celebrate what was touted to be a new era in city retail. Surely, David, this is the centrepiece. I think this is the work that uh, people certainly see and talk about Rundle Mall with, the silver balls. Yeah, we meet here. Meet by the silver balls yep. and everybody knows exactly where it is. Yeah. It's a great artwork. We take pictures of it. Certainly the reflections I think is a really important part. That Bert Flugelman, the artist, wanted to get that reflection of the facades down the mall and you can see that through, yeah. the, uh, through the reflection. There have been lots of additions to the mall over the years, including some public artwork gems, like The Girl on a Slide by John Dowie, small enough to miss if you're not looking for it. But you can't miss the perennial favourites. Augusta, she loves a trot. Oliver's always on the lookout for a bargain in the bin. And Truffles, well, he's a lovely height for a three-year-old. OK, David, quick test on the pigs in the mall. This is? Horatio. How long have they been here? They've been here for 10 years, and I think Horatio is probably the most photographed pig. Yeah, he's all over the world, isn't he? He is. Now, they were a bit controversial when they started. I think like most artworks, people love them or hate them, but now you, you couldn't do anything with them. There's so many people here, kids having photos taken, they're popular. This is a shopping mall, and shopping goes back about as far as we did, doesn't it? It certainly does, and I think you can see that in some of the wonderful history and some of the arcades we have here. And it's a very unique location. Yeah. How many shops? 700 shops here and also 300 offices and, uh, and little businesses here as well. Not to mention 15 arcades and centres. Yep, 15. That includes the beautifully ornate Adelaide Arcade. Built in 1885, it was the first retail establishment in Australia to have electric lights. The Regent Arcade came later. It's a successor to the magnificent Regent Theatre and it captured the glamour of Hollywood and reflected the optimism of the era. Here's one spot where you look up and you can still see the grand ceiling. How big the cinema was. Beautiful. When the Hoyts Regent Theatre opened in 1928, it was billed as the most luxurious in Australia, which set a standard for all time. You could still see a movie under the ornate ceiling right up until 2006. Fashions come and go, but there's no doubt the Rundle Mall is the heart of the city. They reckon there's nothing you can't buy if you look hard enough. We've just concentrated on the Rundle Mall section today, but if you follow the entire trail, you end up coming round and along our cultural boulevard, North Terrace. Finish the lap, time for a coffee in the mall. Pick up a copy of the Rundle Mall Trail Guide at the Visitor Information Centre. It's at the King William Street end, or contact the mall management, they'll send one out.